So talk to us a little bit about different aspects of performance marketing, because your approach is not just influencer marketing, so to speak, but performance marketing. So um, there are networks. These are not necessarily, because when you say influencer, I'm just picturing uh, an individual. Uh, like I said, you know, a, a stay-at-home mom or some Instagram whiz kid, or that's what I'm picturing. But when you say performance marketing, and certain blogs and, and, and blah, blah. So that's a whole different operation. Nevertheless, it's still under performance marketing. So um, for our listeners, describe to us the landscape for performance marketing. What are, Who are the players? And share with us some tips in working with these. Yeah, totally. So, so outside of affiliate influencer, you obviously have your paid search, your paid social, your SEO, um, all a lot of channels out there. You have programmatic, um, and then and then the affiliate world. As I shared, shared earlier, there's a lot of like those elements kind of existing within affiliate. And what I would say within affiliate ecosystem and partner ecosystem is you have, you know, media media houses, you know, Meredith Dot Dash, PNC, um, Stack Commerce. Um, they have they might have you know dozens, hundreds of of partner sites underneath them that are very high quality, like Rolling Stone, GQ, uh, Better Homes and Garden, BobVila.com. These are sites that can do write-ups. It's not just a block banner ad that gets, you know, people get blinded by. It's it's integration and content within those, those sites that people are reviewing. People Magazine, uh, Time Magazine, all of those digital properties are accessible through what is kind of considered partner marketing or affiliate marketing within this ecosystem. So, so those are some opportunities. Then, then also you've got, you know, sub affiliate networks, you've got skim links, Sojourn. They have even more, a more powerful list of sites that you can reach out to work with. Uh, you have coupon and deal, you know, for, especially for like consumer electronics, slick deals is one of the highest traffic sites out there. Um, you obviously got to be, managing your your deal promotional schedule as you would a brand and make sure it falls into your profit goals and you're not cannibalizing too much but there's a lot of good opportunity to be featured on deal and discount sites there's also gated sites sites where you have to be a member you might they might have some for college students you require a college url you might have some for bank of america employees that can log in and get specific perks for being an uh, employee then you've got loyalty, whole whole new vertical. You've got American Express, Rakuten Rewards. Um, you promise where maybe you allocate, moms like to allocate spend towards their college savings for their kid at 529. So there's a lot of things out there that people don't really associate or think about. And a surprisingly high number of people that will consider using one of these partners as part of their buying journey online or or part of their discovery journey. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, how there's quite a few. Those, I mean, those big ones like American Express and others. How do you get into those big organizations? Is there are these networks? Do they have the same thing in common in terms of getting into them, or each one is different? The networks have some similarities in terms of their partner discovery technology and in terms of their how to connect with partners. Partners typically can apply. You know, if you're Nike, you can receive applications and someone on your team or an agency can review and say, I approve Amex and I disapprove the other partner. Um, what often is the differentiator is someone with some affiliate or influencer marketing experience can, you know, come in and either be in-house and help you navigate that process or an agency more, more readily uh, is a good often way to navigate that to say, okay, how do I make sense? How do I have a conversation with Amex? Um, it's, it's easy. It's a lot of these, some of them work with third parties, some of them work with brokers. So it's a very relationship based business. There's, you know, quarterly at least trade shows that the most of the key players are attending. So, if you have someone that's attending those regularly on your behalf to kind of evangelize and say, hey, we'd like to work with you, those can help. Um, we have a very extensive database on our end, just as an example, where 
kind of know who that main contact is. We've seen them at a recent show. We've integrated them with the brand already. So it's usually a human element versus a programmatic element in some of these other channels. When you're getting on Google, when you're getting on Meta, you don't need to necessarily email with a human being to arrange that. Uh, surprisingly, with affiliate, there's there's some programmatic, but there's a lot of human elements still involved. So having someone on your behalf to kind of, you know, broker and negotiate that is is often needed. So the first place that comes to mind to be able to start something like that is LinkedIn, I guess, right? So you could, if you if you talk, because you're saying that uh, you just need to reach out, find the right person, and it's not a system driven approach. So. Uh, you, if you find out who is the person in charge on LinkedIn and initiate a contact and then see where it goes, what do you say to that? Yeah, yes, yes, for sure, possible, and it can can help move things along. Um, but scalability wise, it can be tough. So that's where that's where a lot of a lot of kind of our reason for supporting and helping brands kind of get the attention through through tag, through one-to-many messages, through, you know, if we have to nudge someone on LinkedIn, that helps. Um, but we'll we use everything from email to CRM to a conference um, to to our for our system to recruit partners. Um, you know, and then some of that can be done by getting getting people uh, attention on social like that. But um, it's kind of by any means necessary. So it, it's a bit of herding cats exercises at yeah. times. So, uh, so I'm I'm sure agencies have those relationships, so they can recommend. So they they kind of marry the 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 advertiser with the the right kind of platform based on what fits the best and and then what the requirements are and things like that, right? Exactly. The best affiliate marketers are really phenomenal matchmakers, and they're doing it in a very you know, hey, how do we get the best performance out of it? Way not just relationships, but data and relationships. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, once you have the deal, then obviously it's the execution is everything, right? So execution means right kind of content, right kind of uh, uh, tracking in terms of what's working, what's not working. And so it's not yeah. something you want to do on your own. 